Have you ever noticed that things are often not ideal? I wanted to shoot the uh, workout video today in the living room, but the little tiger has decided to spread out like a rash. All of his toys are all over the place. So instead, I'm just going to, um, I think I'll just shoot the introduction video here in the couch, and then we're going to adapt. Mr. Darwin would be pleased. Probably just go upstairs and shoot the remaining um, part of the video, the workout part, upstairs in a bedroom or something like that. But things are often not perfect and they don't need to be. So let's begin as if everything is just as we had wanted it to be. Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to get sweaty. But before we do that, I really want to go and have a look at um, some or share some of those um, early results from the survey because it's been really, really helpful and I really appreciate your input um, because it helps me create videos that you actually want rather than me trying to ram some stuff down your throat for what I think it is that you need. So it's going to be awesome. So here goes. Let's go to the computer and have a look. So here are the survey results. Number one, the first question was, would you like to learn how to become your own personal trainer? And we see over over 75% of you said yes, which actually was quite surprising to me, but that's really, really useful information. The second thing I asked you was um, about your greatest obstacles. Now, that was split between not having enough time, giving up after a while, and also not knowing what to do exactly. Now, because that's split, that tells me that I really need to create something that's useful that covers all of those obstacles not just one of them. So what subject would you like to learn more about? Motivation, exercises, or what's good to eat and why? So all of the above is two thirds. So again, I need to deal with motivation, exercises, and how to fuel your body to make sure you stay fit and healthy. Question four, what would you most like to develop? Over 60% of you said a combination of willpower, regular workouts, and a healthy eating pattern, rather than just one of them. So I really appreciate your input for that. And how would you like to learn the material? Webinars came up over 56% and then a do-it-yourself program. So I think I'll provide a combination of either having some webinars for you or a do-it-yourself option as well. So question number six, do you have any equipment at home? Well. Almost 70% of you said none. So we have to find a way to work out without um, needing any equipment, which is what um, a lot of travelers require, or I don't know if you're a stay-at-home mom, I don't know what your situation is, but it's really useful to have a complete, a comprehensive set of exercises that you can do where you just use your own body. So I'm gonna make sure that um, you get fully equipped for that. Thank you very much for that. So let's get back to what we're going to do today. So we've got those huge obstacles, structure, motivation, and time, a lack of all of those, and we're gonna to have to deal with them somehow. And today we're going to solve it in um, the realm of getting sweaty, okay? So it's not just about what we eat or how we think, we also have to do our push-ups, remember? So I hope you've got your sweatpants on. I've got a t-shirt on and some sweatpants because I'm gonna get sweaty with you. I'm gonna show you what to do. Um, now, before we get into that, I just want to have a quick recap of uh, what we did already. Remember in that first video, we looked at my greatest possession. That's when I got the violin out and pretended I could play it, although I can't anymore. And then what we did was realize that we can change our state when we are you know, not feeling so good. Maybe we come home late from work and we want to work out and we just don't really feel like it. We're a little bit lethargic. We can step one, vent and turn up, okay? Step two was we ease ourselves into the workout and step three, we say, it's okay, I'm not 100%. I'm gonna do 60% today, maybe. That's okay, maybe 70%. But just applying that simple but incredibly powerful technique will enable you to get through a workout when you otherwise wouldn't and that keeps the motivation up and it also takes hardly any time to apply that technique as well. Now the second video that we dealt with or we looked at was me in the kitchen and that's where I was suggesting to you that you can make your own rules and one of my rules is I'm going to be good maybe five or six days out of the week and I'm going to eat fruits and um, have lots of veggie juices for breakfast and then one or two days of the week as you saw me I was drinking a latte and having some um, some kind of cookie all right I know it's naughty I know it's full of stuff that isn't very healthy but it doesn't matter if most of the time I know that I'm fueling my body I can be kind of happy because I will also be very light I will feel 
great, I will be fueling my body with nutrients. And on the other two days, it doesn't really matter so much. Maybe you take, I don't know, five or six steps forward and one or two back. That's still great progress. And that avoids the straight jacket. We don't want to live in a straight jacket. So we have motivation because we will be um, feeling light. We will have more energy. And if you're overweight, you may even already notice that by doing that, following that kind of breakfast regime, you will already start to lose some pounds, which is really, really cool. So what I want you to do is um, realize that it's just a journey. I'm taking you step by step in a process, okay? I've got a system here for you. We've got those huge obstacles, lack of structure, lack of motivation, and lack of time. If we can overcome those obstacles, maybe we can change from, you know what, I can't do it, to, you know, it's difficult. You know, it's not gonna be easy, but I can do it. You can step one, vent and turn up. You can ease yourself into the workout. You can just say, okay, I'm gonna be 60, 70% today. You can make your own rules and say, I'm gonna just eat fruit or veggies or whatever your rule is in the morning. And then a couple of days in the week, you just say, well, you know, I'm just gonna let it all go. That's okay, you will still get your results like that. So all I want you to do now is um, go get your sweatpants, put your sweatpants on, get a stopwatch. If you have a round timer on your smartphone, that's okay, if that means nothing to you, don't worry, at a later date, I'll show you how to um, set your timer and how to download one. They're very cheap, even free nowadays. If you don't have one, just get your stopwatch. And thirdly, I just want you to save the file that I attached with this email that gave you access to this video. That's going to be um, the summary of the workout that you're going to do today. So just save it to your desktop or just print it off so you have a hard copy in front of you because I want you to record what you're about to do. So on my way upstairs, I want you to um, press pause, get ready, and I'll see you up there. Okay, so with me, nice and slowly at first. There's the jumping jack, and then you come down. And down and up, out and in, down and up. And the deeper the better with the squat. And down, down. Give me three more, come on, with me. One, and down. There's two more, one more. That's it, warming up your legs. Cardio is great, you know it's good. Okay, we're gonna do some high knee jumping. Great for warming up. Just lift those knees up in front of you. Now, what you can do, have your arms by your side, but I prefer to have the hands up and have your knees hit your hands. Don't bring your hands down. Keep those hands up. And now I want your core activated and breathing rhythmically. I'm breathing every fourth step. That's my rhythm. Find your own rhythm, get warm, get ready for what's to happen. So I'm just gonna do a few um, shoulder warm-up movements in all three planes of motion. First one, over your head and back. And they should be Nice and comfortable, you shouldn't be straining at all when you're warming up. Okay, I'd say do about 10 each of these. I think this is about eight, nine, and 10. Okay, now reverse the direction. So your arms are coming forward, nice straight arms. Two, three, four. As you can hear, my breathing is pretty comfortable. It's not strained, it's just a warm up. Okay, now we're going to do to the side. So you come down to the side. Shoulders up and down, up and down. You can go a little higher each time, and then you can even touch your hands if you want to. And down, up, and down, up, and down. Give me three more, two more, one more. And then the last one, we're gonna go in the transverse plane, twisty plane, elbows up, shoulders low, not shoulders by your ears, keep them nice and low, and then just twist. Do this gently, you might hear a few back cracks, that's okay. But don't go forcing them. Six, seven, eight. And this is just preparing you for what's to come. 
With this side lunge you're going to need some leg strength and stability and also some hip flexibility. What we do is take a big step to the side, keep your core activated as always and tilt your pelvis backwards, okay? Silverback gorilla position I call it, right? Then you're going to bend your knee. I don't want your knee beyond your big toe, all right? Keep it back, okay? And extend your arms out as you come down and then come back. Do five of these with me. Core tight, out wide, bend that knee down. Make sure your back is nice and neutral. One, and down. That's two, down and up. Three, two more. Down low and up. One more. And then of course you're gonna repeat for the other leg for the same number of repetitions or duration. Okay, we need an activated core as always. Arms nice and wide, okay? And then you're going to lean forward. Stick that bum back, no rounded spine, stick the bum back. And then dive down, touch the floor, keep those legs nice and straight. Bend your knees, palms flat on the floor. If you can, keep those palms flat on the floor and then straighten those legs. Then come up, keep your back flat. Okay, we're not gonna come up with a round back, back, back. We're gonna do this a few more times. And then come back up again. Let's go back down. And exhale as you go down. Touch the floor, bend your knees, palms to the floor. Keep them there if you can. Straighten those legs, palms up. Keep your back flat now. And come back up, up, up. Give me three more. And down. Okay, bend those knees, palms to the floor. Keep those palms there. Straighten those legs. And fingertips. Flat back. Arms up. And off we come. Two more. Breathe in and dive down. Nice neutral back. Fingers to the floor. Bend your knees. Palms to the floor, straighten those legs. Bring those palms back up. Nice neutral back. Flat back and then up. Got one more with me. Here we go, down. Exhale, stretch those hamstrings. Lovely. Okay, with me, bend your knees. Palms to the floor, straighten those hammies. Bring those palms off the floor, fingertips to the floor. Straight back, arms up, and then come up in a nice, relaxed manner. Okay, this is a really nice way of getting those hamstrings nice and long, and also making that back nice and flexible. Enjoy it. Mountain climbers, a real boot camp favorite and an excellent total body movement. Great cardio. We've got arms involved, shoulders, chest, abdominals and legs. What you've got to do is have your hands about shoulder width apart and then what you want to do is take one knee and hold it under your chest. Keep the foot in the air, don't put it down. Keep it up in the air. Then you're going to swap your leg positions. I'm going to do about 20 of these. That's it, you've got to keep that core tight because you want to stay safe, of course. And if you need to rest, you just come back like this and you just sit on your heels and then you get um, back to it again. I don't know if your adaptation is 30 seconds, 45 or 60, but in any case, it's a really, really good, powerful cardio total body movement. This movement is a little explosive. You're going to go from the plank position to a push-up position or a plank position actually. Um, and just repeat that. Ah, it's really good for your upper body strength and of course your core stability. That's why we're doing this. 
So you get in the plank position. Squeeze that belly button into your spine. And then what you do is come up and down. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do this. The easier way to do it is just to put your hands flat and then lift up and go back down. I'll repeat that. So just turn my hands so I can put them flat down like this and lift up and come down. And the harder way to do it is to put your hands where your elbows are. So you come back here and back there and then push up. Okay, and come back down. Either way, let's do five. Ready? Three, two, one. That's one. And up. Two. Down. And push. Three. Two more. And up. Four. And up. That's it. Now we're going to do some kneecaps. I call them kneecaps, but it sounds a little ominous, but hopefully it's not too serious for you. What you've got to do is put your knees or cover your knees with your hands, activate these core muscles as always, and then just lower your upper body, let your hands slide down your thighs, and then come back up and just cover your kneecap. Don't go any further than that. Just a small motion like this, breathing as comfortably as you can. I would suggest breathing out as you come up. Okay, so with me, nice and slowly at first. There's the jumping jack, and then you come down. Come out, and down, and up. Out and in, down and up. The deeper the better with the squat. Give me three more, come on, with me, one, and down, that's two more, one more, and up, that's it, warming up your legs, cardio is great, you know it's good. Okay, this push-up variation increases your balance and strength capabilities because you're not only going up and down, you're going side to side. So your knees are about shoulder width apart. You put one hand in the middle, up in front, and then the other hand out wide. And you bend your elbows until your chest comes down low towards the floor, and then you push up. Remember, we're not doing a head butt. We're just lowering the chest and pushing up. And then we swap our hand positions. The left hand goes where the right was, and then you do the same on the other side. Remember to keep your breathing nice and constant. Breathe out when you need your power. In this case, it's when you push up. That's it. I like to call this um, a complete lunge. Some people call it a pendulum lunge. The reason is because we go forwards in the lunge and we come back to this position and then step backwards. So we do both a forward and a backward lunge as one movement. We do stand up, core um, engaged as always. Big step backwards. Okay, make sure you have enough space behind you. Got just enough here. Now make sure your shin bone is vertical. Stand up, keep this moving leg in the air, don't put it down, and then you step forwards, and then you do lunge on this side. Now, again, make sure your shin bone is nice and vertical, get your balance, you stand back, and you come all the way back, so you kind of make a pendulum, or complete lunge as I like to call it, backwards and forwards. That's it, that's what you do. And then, of course, you want to change over and warm up the other leg as well. So in case, in my case, it would be do my right side as well for the same number of repetitions. A hip raise. This is an innocent looking ab screamer. What we do is lie down, arms flat on the floor, head rested, neck rested. And what you're going to do is lift your feet off the floor together until your 
thighs are vertical and then you lift your hips off of the floor and down again up and down you just keep repeating that that's really good for the muscles in your pelvic floor and your lower abdominals if that's a bit difficult what you want to do then is just lift your legs a little bit further and then repeat the movement that's it so once you can do that quite comfortably you come back to the vertical position of your thighs and then do that that's it hip raise I'm a little bit nerdy here, I'm all tucked in, but I don't care, I want you to see something. It's very important for your core. What we do with this exercise is make sure that we never sag down, okay? We've gotta keep this area super tight in a nice plank position. So you, um, your hands underneath your shoulders, you jump in, then you make sure your back is in a nice neutral position, nice and solid, and then you stand up, come back down, Jump back, back to here, not down there. Back to here, jump in, nice neutral back, and then stand up. How not to do this? And then a bent back upwards. Ah, horrible, don't do it like that. Do it with me. Nice plank, in, neutral back, core tight, look up, and then stand up. If you want, you can put your hand on your back, just to check. In, out, and up. Good, two more, back, take your back, and up, one more, in, check that back, and up you go, okay, have fun with it. Okay, for this one, we want three points of contact against the wall. Your two heels and your buttocks, basically, to get an effective stretch. This is quite um, a good stretch because it does more than one muscle group at a time. You're gonna do your inside legs, your adductors, and also along your back and your shoulders. So, what you do is get comfortable, bend your knees first and put your fingers down. Okay, so you want to be stable. It's nothing worse than trying to balance and stretch at the same time. So you get stable first. Then you put your heels against the wall and also um, your buttocks. And you keep them there. Now, you push your hands forwards. Okay, straighten those arms, push those hands forward. And then what I want you to not do, this is what not to do lift your buttocks away from the wall as you stretch okay because that's going to take away the stretch so that's why i say those three points of contact right heel left heel and buttocks and then you stretch forwards you push the carpet or the floor away from you okay and you just stay there for about i don't know 30 seconds and during that time you might feel that you want to go a bit further notice my hands creeped forward that's okay, that's good. That means that your tendons are relaxing and you just stay there and push the floor away from you. Now when you're finished, bring the hands in and inch your feet towards you to make it easy to come out of the stretch. And that's it. A hamstring stretch, hamstrings. Group of three muscles, underside of your leg, okay? This also stretches your calves, okay? It's a very basic um, stretch that uh, we, we really, this is like stretch 101, okay? We need to have flexible hamstrings. Now, if you've got quite tight hamstrings, I want you to follow this exercise because a lot of people just kind of reach forward and just dive and bounce, and that's not really helpful. What you want to do, especially if you've got tight hamstrings, okay? Bend your knees first. Relax, I always say when you're stretching, what you need to do is pretend you're underwater. Okay, if you've ever been scuba diving, everything is nice and slow, no jerky movements, all right? Because you don't wanna injure yourself. You should be relaxed when you're stretching. So you grab your toes from um, above and below with your knees bent. 
Okay, and then what you do is you have leverage now and you use this grip to inch backwards so your buttocks are going backwards, okay? As you do that, your knees will um, go closer to the floor. Now you just get to a position where this feels nice and tight, where your hamstrings begin to say, ouch, okay? And you just relax there. Hold the stretch for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Now if that's easy, what you do is just go back a little bit further. Okay, until maybe your knees do touch the floor. But if you're up here, that's okay, just hold it there and just relax. You know, as you can um, hear me speaking, I'm not out of breath. This is not cardio, this is stretching. So you just relax, stay there. And if you wanna go a little further, you can. Okay, but I don't wanna see this. Nonsense, don't do that. You're in control here. Okay, so that's it. Okay, what you do is put your hands under your shoulders, keep your hips above your knees, then you curl your toes so the balls of your feet are on the floor, and then you pivot around your ankles and around your shoulders, and then you just stretch your spine. Now, of course, I don't have to say your core is engaged, and you push backwards. Just push back and hold it. You're trying to get your ankles, or your heels I should say, on the floor. If they're up in the air, don't worry, it will come with practice. And you just push, and it's like you're pushing your hands and your feet away from each other. And you feel that stretch in your spine with your core engaged. And you just hold it there. This is really an excellent stretch for anybody with back issues. And even if you don't have back issues, back issues, it's a good stretch anyway. Okay, we need an activated core as always. Arms nice and wide, okay? And then you're going to lean forward. Stick that bum back. No rounded spine, stick the bum back. And then dive down, touch the floor, keep those legs nice and straight. Bend your knees, palms flat on the floor. If you can, keep those palms flat on the floor and then straighten those legs. And then come up, keep your back flat. Okay, we're not gonna come up with the round back, back flat. We're gonna do this a few more times. And then come back up again. Let's go back down. And exhale as you go down. Touch the floor, bend your knees, palms to the floor. Keep them there if you can. Straighten those legs. Palms up, keep your back flat now, and then come back up, up, ah. Give me three more, and down, ah. Okay, bend those knees, palms to the floor, keep those palms there, straighten those legs, and fingertips, flat back, arms up, and up we come. Two more. Breathe in and dive down. Nice neutral back. Fingers to the floor. Bend your knees. Palms to the floor. Straighten those legs. Bring those palms back up. Nice neutral back. Flat back and then up. Got one more with me. Here we go, down. Exhale, stretch those hamstrings. Lovely. Okay, with me, bend your knees, palms to the floor, straighten those hammies. Bring those palms off the floor, fingertips to the floor, straight back. Arms up, and then come up in a nice, relaxed manner. Okay, this is a really nice way of getting those hamstrings nice and long and also making that back nice and flexible. Enjoy it. Congratulations, if you vented and turned up and you got sweaty and you did your fitness test, awesome. Hats off. You know, it takes guts to actually get uncomfortable, get chains, get your t-shirt on, your, your sweatpants and just do this. You know, and if it's inconvenient because maybe you have kids that are just creating a mess or you've got other family members that you don't want to jump around and get sweaty in front of, I understand. And if you just did it, really, really cool. Now, 
I want to go back to, to thanking you again for completing um, the survey because if you're watching this video it's highly likely that you've actually um, given me your input and I've been able to create a, um, a do-it-yourself system to show you how to basically get fit and stay fit and healthy by yourself. I never really thought that that's something that I would be creating but it seems to be very very important to um, to you to become your own personal trainer. I think there's over 75% over of people that um, said yes they would be interested or wanted to become their own personal trainer and what I've tried to give you over the last um, three videos is to give you the confidence to realize that even if you have these huge obstacles of a lack of structure, lack of motivation or a lack of time or a combination of them all, you can overcome them. And I've done it with three really simple techniques. The very first one, remember, um, your, my greatest possession, that was showing you how what you could do is just vent and turn up. That's what you may have had to do to get the fitness test done today and it's not that tricky. Then we went on into the kitchen and I showed you how you can create your own rules. By doing that you create motivation. You're not just following some dogma that someone said hey do this now and somehow fit it into your lifestyle. You create your own rules. That helps you to keep your motivation. And it doesn't take any time to chop up the fruits if that's what you're doing or to juice them or whatever it is that you're doing. It doesn't take any time at all and it gives you structure. It's very important to have structure, otherwise we'll end up a little bit wayward, a little bit rudderless. Now today we looked at all three again, we looked at all three of those problems of structure, motivation and time by just doing the workout, which I hope you did and took less than, what, 30 minutes including the warm up and the cool down, so very, very cool. Now I didn't realize it but over um, the last 20-25 years I've actually become my own personal trainer. I've been training myself for, for many many years and I didn't realize that I have a lot of experience and I can pass that on to you and show you how you can do this yourself. Now I just want to leave you with two things before I go. I like to play the what if game. I used to like to play it when I was a little kid. I still play it a little bit. You know like what if we had this? What if we had that? Now what if you had a system to show you how to become your own personal trainer, okay? Or what if you had um, a system that also showed you how to um, structure or how to motivate yourself or how to deal with the time sensitive lives that we live, live today in order to become healthy and fit? What if you had um, a system that showed you how to eat healthily and showed you the rules for that or what exercises to do or maybe a system to completely change your habits so it became easier to do those push-ups and veggies? What if you could learn it by yourself, maybe online at your own pace or maybe as a group um, with webinars? Well. I'm going to show you a program that I've put together that puts all of this together and that will be in the next video. Be there for that one. I want you to leave with this parting thought. If you were at all um, doubtful of yourself and if you've taken part in any of the exercises in the last few videos, I want you to realize that if you thought you couldn't do it before, I want you to change that because you can. There's not much stopping you. There's not many people that cannot actually do something about their situation with respect to health and fitness. And I'm going to guess that you're one of these people that can do something about it. If you've done any of the exercises I provided in the last few videos, you will know that you have come from where you were, which maybe was a position of, I'm not sure if I can do it, to a little bit further along the line. So I want you to change from, I can't do it, to, you know what, it's not easy, but I can do it and I'll show you how you can. So join me with the next video and I'll show you how to wrap this all together. So make today the best of your past and the worst of your future. Bye for now.